Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 3 of the chapter Organic Chemistry Some Basic Principles and Techniques. In the previous video, I started discussing the subtopic tetravalence of carbon and I explained to you the subtopics under this subtopic that is the shapes of carbon compounds and some, compound, uh, some characteristic features of pi bonds. Moving ahead with the same discussion, it becomes important to discuss the solved examples also in this subtopic because that helps you to understand the subtopic better. So I'm straight away going to come to the first question. How many sigma and pi bonds are present in each of the following molecules? These two molecules are given to you and you're supposed to find out the total number of sigma and pi bonds. You know, the first bond that is formed between two atoms is always a sigma bond. A sigma bond is one that is formed by the head-on overlap of the orbitals. And a pi bond is formed by the sideways overlap of an orbital. So if the first bond is formed, it would be by the head-on overlap. And a pi bond would be the second bond and it would be formed by the, by the sideways overlap. We've studied this in the previous uh, video and also in chapter 4. So the first bond is always a sigma bond. Whenever there's a single bond between two atoms, it has to be a sigma bond. And whenever there are multiple bonds, after the first one, the rest of them, that is the second and the third, would be pi bonds. So in order to assign that or to count the total number of bonds, you must know how many bonds are there. So it would help to make an expanded structure and then count. So CH. It means you have H here, you have C here. There is a triple bond between C and C. There's a single bond between these, the C and this C. Then the H is here. There are two bonds between this carbon and the next carbon. And this is the hydrogen here. And this carbon is attached to the next carbon and which is attached to three other hydrogens. So this is the expanded form of the molecule. Remember, whenever you are making the expanded form, if you have a little doubt, all you have to do is count that every carbon should be forming four bonds. For example, in this one, there are three bonds on one side and one bond on one side, so there are four bonds. Here, three and one. Here, you have two, three, four. Two, three, four. And one, 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 one is four. So every carbon should be forming four bonds, and then that is there. Uh, when you've made sure, then it means your structure is correct. So now, the first bonds are always sigma bonds. So let us start counting the sigma bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So there are 10 sigma bonds. Okay. And how about the pi bonds? After the first bond, where are, where are the multiple bonds? The multiple bonds are present between these two carbons and these two carbons. The first bond is always a sigma bond. The other ones, in addition to that, how many ever bonds are there are pi bonds. So you have three bonds here. So there are one is sigma and two are pi. So you have two pi bonds here and one pi bond here between these two carbons. The first would be a sigma bond. The second is a pi bond. So a total of three pi bonds. So you have 10 sigma bonds and three pi bonds in this molecule. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Let's do the second question now. So now you have CH2, C, CH, CH3. So follow the same steps. Let us first write down the molecule in the expanded form so that we know we can see each and every bond separately. So you have C, H, H, double bond, C, double bond, C, H, C, H, H, and so these are all the bonds that are that it is forming. So let's first count the sigma bonds, the total number of bonds. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So there are 9 sigma bonds and in pi bonds, the first bond is a sigma bond. The second and the third are always pi bonds. So you have two double bonds. So there are two pi bonds here. Two pi bonds. The first is a sigma, the second is a pi. First sigma, second pi. So how many total pi? There are two pi bonds. So that's how you would be counting the number of sigma and pi bonds in these molecules. So you have 
Okay, in the textbook, they've specified not just the total number of sigma and pi bonds, they have specified the number of uh, sigma bonds between carbon-carbon and the number of sigma bonds between carbon and hydrogen. They've separated those. And the pi bonds are always between carbon and carbon. Or they could be with oxygen also or any other element. But with hydrogen, hydrogen forms only one bond. So CH bonds would always be the sigma bonds. So that solves the first example. Let us come to the next question. What is the type of hybridization of each carbon in the following compounds? Whenever carbon combines with four atoms in single bonds, the hybridization is sp3. If there is the presence of one double bond with carbon, it means it is forming three single bonds and one of them is a double bond, which means one of them has one additional bond. So it would be a triangular planar structure and the hybridization of this carbon would be sp2 because 1s and 2p orbitals are hybridizing and the unhybridized orbital is going to form the pi bond. The other way to look at it would be that any compound where there is a double bond between carbon and carbon or where carbon is forming a double bond would be an sp2 carbon. And if carbon is forming a triple bond in the molecule, then that carbon is sp hybridized. So just by knowing the bonding, you can tell whether a compound is, now what is the hybridization of the carbon there? So let's take the first molecule. The first molecule is CH3Cl. Let's make the structure. H, Cl, H, H. It is CH3Cl. All the bonds are single bonds. Four single bonds, what is the hybridization? SP3. Second one is CH3 whole twice CO. So how would you make the structure? It means there is C, H, 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 C, O, C, H, H and H. This would be the molecule. Now look at this carbon. This had only one carbon, so it was sp3 hybridized. This compound has three carbons. So the, this one, carbon one, let us call this carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. This one is forming four single bonds. So what is the hybridization? sp3. This is forming two single bonds, rather three single bonds, one double bond. So, or three sigma bonds and one pi bond. So whenever you have one double bond, this would be sp2 hybridized. And this carbon is forming four single bonds again, so it is sp3 hybridized. So you can assign the hybridization to every carbon just by looking at the number of bonds it is forming. This is forming all four single bonds, sp3. Any double bond, sp2. If there's a triple bond, it'll be sp3. So let's take the next compound. The next compound is CH3CN. ch 3 C, triple bond, N. This is the structure. So this carbon, carbon 1, is forming four single bonds. Therefore, this is sp3 hybridized. And this carbon is forming a triple bond and a single bond. So this is sp hybridized. Whenever there is a triple bond, the hybridization of that carbon is sp. Next, D. H, C, O. Let me straight away make the structure just to... H, C, double bond O, carbon when it combines with oxygen has a double bond in it, and N, H, and H. So nitrogen forms three bonds, oxygen forms two bonds, carbon here, there is only one carbon, and we've been asked the hybridization of carbon in H. So here, carbon is forming how many bonds? It is forming Four bonds, of course, one of them is double and two single. So what is the hybridization when there is a double bond? It is sp2. E. CH3, so I'll make the CH3. CH, double bond, CH, C, triple bond, N. Right? Now, look at this molecule. The first carbon is forming four single bonds. Therefore, this is sp3 hybridized. This is forming, this has one double bond. Therefore, this is sp2. 
This carbon is also forming one double bond, therefore this is also sp2. And this carbon has a sing triple bond and a single bond, therefore it is sp. So that is how you would assign the hybridization to each carbon atom. And now we have one more problem to do before I wind up this video. Give me a minute to write it down. Now this is question 12.3. The question reads, write the state of hybridization of carbon in the following compounds and the shapes of each of the molecules. I told you in the previous video that whenever you have sp3 hybridization, the shape of the molecule is that of a tetrahedron. So it is that of a tetrahedron. So the tetrahedral shape around carbon is what you would see. The shape of the molecule would be tetrahedral. If there's a double bond, that is the hybridization would be sp2 and the shape of sp2 hybridized carbon around the, the carbon would be trigonal planar. And if there's a triple bond, it is sp hybridization and the shape of the molecule is linear. The angle, maximum angle would be 180 degrees. And therefore, here for the first compound you see in A, it is, there's a double bond. A double bond means the hybridization is sp2. And what is the shape of sp2 hybridization? It is trigonal planar. Okay. And B is CH3F. CH3F means carbon in the middle and three hydrogens and one fluorine. So it has all four single bonds. There are carbon is forming bonds with four atoms. All of them have to be single bonds. So the hybridization would be sp3. And what is the shape of sp3 hybridized compound? It would be tetrahedral. And the third is HCN. HCN. There's a triple bond. Whenever you have a triple bond, the shape of the molecule is linear and the hybridization is sp and the molecule is linear. Right? So these were the three solved examples or practice problems which would help you, I hope they helped you to understand the tetravalence of carbon better. With this I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.